because the IBM PC was based around the Intel chip and because it ran Microsoft's operating system, there was no agreement with Microsoft to actually supply IBM only. Uh, so Compaq went to, uh, to Microsoft and said, can we buy your software? Yep, that's fine, no problem. They went to Intel and said, can we buy your chip? And Intel said, yep, that's fine. Um, the only problem they had was the BIOS. The BIOS is the chip that links the hardware to the low-level software. So what Compaq had to do is create something that was a... I'm not going to use that word. Um, it was extremely similar. It was very, very similar. They did the same thing, yeah. right? And basically what they did is they, they kind of reverse engineered that chip. So they had somebody that had never seen or used an IBM PC, um, and they had somebody, that person, create a specification for exactly what that chip would do, and somebody else that has also never seen those IBM machines um, would then write the code based on that specification. Lo and behold, you end up with something that does exactly the same thing as the original IBM BIOS. Amazing that we get it so exactly similar if they hadn't seen it, isn't it? Um, yes. The law wasn't the same for software as it is now. I don't think this story could be done today. That created a product and a company that was the fastest growing company in American business history. Compaq grew and grew and grew, producing them desktop PCs in the same way as IBM were, and really did make computing portable and compatible. You know, everybody that was using these could also share their data with other people that had IBM PCs. And it blew the market open because then everybody could produce machines that were 100% compatible as well. So although the original um, you know, uh, reverse engineer of the chip might be a little bit questionable. Um, actually, something amazing happened. We ended up with something that was compatible. Everybody was using the same system and we could all share this data. We owe it quite a lot. Holt and Catch Fire is kind of based on the compact story, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Reverse engineer an IBM PC with me. I want to build a computer that nobody else has the balls to build. Are you out of your mind? What was this machine called then? Just the portable? It's the compact portable. Yeah. I mean, compact was an unknown name. So, you know, the, the, the term compact um, sort of quickly becomes synonymous with, with portable computing and, and, and this 100% IBM compatible sort of thing that was going on. So, yeah, really important. And later on, compact would then merge with HP and well, the rest of it's all gone a little bit pear shaped now. But, you know, great thing at the time. Being PC compatible, just put the keyboard back on. It's a clever design, isn't it? Yeah, it's really good. Because that's the, that's the bottom of it. Yeah, that's the, the bottom of it. You would stand it up like that, but at the side then, you'd have these little trapdoors that would reveal the power supply on that side. So you can put your cable in there. And then on this side, you have all your I.O. cards, standard PC cards that would go in the side there, so you could expand it, more memory, printer, hard disk interface, whatever. And I'm assuming there would be no battery in one of these. There's no battery, they would only run off the mains. Um, same as the, the earlier Osborns as well. Battery technology was nowhere near capable of doing that sort of thing. These were all full-size components, really, in these things. You know, although they shrunk the screens, they were using standard floppy drives. They have fairly high current draw. Batteries okay. were not going to cut it. No, I was going to say that the screen is pretty impressive looking in that, considering. Mm. Yeah, these, these have got a, a, a decent sized screen. Um, so, uh, so yeah, in that, those terms, it was not bad at all. Certainly a step up from the Osborne. But then the Osborne, in a similar way, although it had a very, very small screen, had a composite video output. So you could also sit on top of it a decent sized composite video monitor as well. Um, so while it's in your office, you could have a bigger screen. A little bit like people do with laptops today. You know, just connect them to your main screen in the office and just use your laptop in the office as well. So we have all the variations of the, the compact. So there was a compact portable, which is this. Then there was a compact plus. There's the compact portable two and the three. Obviously developing as the PC technology developed. And then they would later on go on to create the Desk Pro and, and all the rest of those machines, which were more desktop oriented. So that's the plus. We've got the, the three and the, the two and the various other ones down there. In the museum, there's over a thousand different systems, different machines in the collection. Um, that's not multiples of the same, you know, lots of BBC micros and things. It's, it's actually oh, independent. Alice, different systems. to begin with, we need to calculate a private key, right, or a private variable. I'm going to choose red for Alice. There we go. I probably could have used more food colour. I think it's kind of pale red. Is that red? Yeah. Close enough.